to watch my first ever World Cup game. This is what the World Cup is all about. If I've ever experienced an atmosphere quite like this, wow! It's 9.30, still haven't finished packing, still working on shooting some things. Honestly, my hard drive has been saying there's two hours remaining for the past two hours. So hoping that's gonna finish copy soon so I can finish recording. Getting pretty excited to go. Made it to the airport, gonna be insane. Guess the badge was too easy on this football quiz on the plane. Expect amazing, here we go. Almost made it to Europe. Bite to eat and it's time to go to sleep. Approximately 10 hours later. Didn't get much sleep on that flight. Made it to Doha, as you can see. FIFA World Cup, we're here. First impressions of Doha? This place is the future. Baggage claim on brand. Adidas store too, got some cash. 500 Qatari Rials was the equivalent of about 140 USD, but it came out in just one banknote. Sup cabby. First stop, breakfast. Hit up this place called Talatin, got a delicious breakfast wrap. Here's how I know I've arrived in Qatar. Metro entrance, this. Off to the hotel for a quick nap, and then on to Korea versus Ghana. We are outside Education City Stadium, Ghana and Korea kicking off just moments away. So excited for my first World Cup game. Missed the anthems, got to my seat in time to see the opening ceremony ending. Still time for a cheeky selfie. Didn't know they did this every game. Two, one. Ghana fans were rocking early. Korea too, love to see it. Ghana opened the scoring with two goals in the first half. Cho Gwe Sung answered with two goals in three minutes. Grabbed something called a spinach fatire at concessions. Little did I know this would become my go-to stadium food. Bro, what are you doing? It's the World Cup. Mohamed Kudus stole the show with two goals, including the winner. Wow, what a wild one that was between Korea and Ghana. Ghana took the lead with two first half goals. Korea battled back in the second with two of their own, two within three minutes. And then at the end, Kudu scores again for Ghana. They win it 3-2, very dramatic. What a way to watch my first ever World Cup game. Can you believe that? Ghana fans are about to party all night. You love to see it. Made it to the FIFA Fan Fest and saw what that was all about. Did manage to find Budweiser here. It was one of the only locations that the beer was being sold during the tournament. Another bite to eat, vegan poke bowl, pretty decent. The Fan Fest was quite far away from everything, so I used the walk back to chat with some friends and fam back home. That's all for tonight. Sleeping two hours out of the past 36 will do that to you. Day two in Doha, kicking it at the hotel, just about to get something to eat before I head to Ecuador, Senegal. Gotta get a little work done. Probably give you the full tour later. Hit up this place called Nosh Cravings. It was so good that I got a wrap to go so I could eat it after the match when I'm working. But for now, more football. I chose my hotel location due to its proximity to the metro. It was convenient to only have to walk eight minutes to get to a train on the green, red, or gold line. Day two, back at it again, off to Ecuador versus Senegal. Both teams need a win in this game to make sure they can advance to the round of 16. The sheer size of the metro system was incredible, and it was purpose-built, so you could drop it off right at the stadium. Lots of excitement out here, seeing fans from all over the world. This is what the World Cup is all about. We are here at Khalifa International Stadium, site of a decisive Group A match between Ecuador and Senegal. Up and up and up and around we go. All the way up this tower, I got a feeling my seat is going to be somewhere near the top of Khalifa International Stadium. Both teams needing a win to get through to the knockout stage should be a pretty entertaining one.
Halftime, got a non-alcoholic Bud Zero. Had to try the food. This was the veggie roll. It was basically shredded carrots, lettuce, tomato, and cucumber in a tortilla. Not bad, but a little bland. Ecuador equalized, but the parody didn't last long. Koulibaly put Senegal back ahead just three minutes later. Mendy came up big with a few saves too. Tempers flared. It got heated with a berth in the knockout stage on the line. Well, that's all the action from the Khalifa International Stadium. Senegal going on to the round of 16. Ecuador, their World Cup dream is over. They're devastated. You can see it on the players' faces. But congrats to Senegal. They were the better side tonight. Ecuador, I think they're going to change their tactics. They were good in the first two games. They should have been more aggressive. They played for the draw. They didn't get it. Lesson to the managers, never play for the draw. Saw these guys swapping shirts outside the stadium. Very wholesome. Also met some other Americans. The USA-Iran game was right after Ecuador-Senegal, but I didn't have a ticket. Fortunately, we made to the knockouts. Had a bit of a food fiasco this morning. Delivery apps just weren't working for me, so it took about three hours to get the food, but it's finally here. Had an Uber to the restaurant. Nosh was so good yesterday that I needed it again. It took a while, so I just ordered food to last me two or three days. Got some nuggets, a vegan sausage roll, Greek salad for later, and this wonderful thing that I would later learn was called the kanafa. Shout out to my editor Vix for the insight. VVIP, that's me. Just kidding, no idea where my ticket even is tonight. Here at Al Janoub Stadium in Al Wakra. This is one of the furthest stadiums outside of Doha, along with the Al Bayt Stadium. Another very distinctive architectural design. Pretty crazy stadium, looking forward to seeing the action inside. Made it to Al Janoub, what a seat this is. I know a few of you were telling me to support Australia, but as you can see, I'm right in the middle of the Denmark section, so I will be supporting Denmark tonight. Denmark! Denmark! I have to say it was pretty cool to sit in the Denmark section. You could feel the excitement and anticipation of the fans when they were seeing their heroes warm up for a pivotal match. The ball made it into the crowd during warm-ups, and everyone wanted to touch it. As always, the pyrotechnics were spectacular prior to kickoff. What a show they put on. This game was very tight. Australia defended so well at the World Cup. Credit to them and their organization. Denmark needed a goal to ensure they would advance and started getting desperate. Ericsson even went for goal from a tight angle. But pushing so many players forward opened up gaps at the back, playing right into the hands of the Socceroos. From then on, Denmark really tried pushing everyone forward, but to no avail. Australia held out after some brave defending and were able to enjoy their moment. Full time here at Al Janoub Stadium. Australia won, Denmark nil. Just wasn't happening for Denmark today. Can't say it wasn't for the support. It was great hanging out with them in their supporter section. Anyway, Australia, they defended so well. They were not going to be beaten today. And that's how Australia punched their ticket into the last 16. Pretty wholesome to see an Australia supporter FaceTiming their grandparents after the win. Afterward, I met one of my former colleagues, Tancredi Palmieri. You may remember him from the famous Espressino video. There's not really time to relax and take an espresso for Juventus. By the way, this is Espressino, not espresso. A part of milk as well, Nutella all over the wall of the cup, and cacao all over. Remember, Espressino. It is called Espressino, not espresso. Depends, depends what, what you order, if you order espresso or not espresso. Then, I went to one of the only bars in Qatar, meeting up with my friends B4 Lancer and Jared HD for a rare beer as we watched the final games of the night. Pretty cool seeing the marina at night, and that was how day three ended for me. Let me tell you, I don't know if I've ever experienced an atmosphere quite like this. Wow! This was one of the most exciting days I had in Doha. Morocco was the surprise story of the tournament, and their fans showed up in a major way. As you can see, the transit was an absolute nightmare. This stadium was far away from the metro, and I didn't want to miss kickoff. So when I saw these guys running, I did the same thing. But then I had to slow down and not miss the atmosphere the Moroccans were creating. <laughs> Nonetheless, we made it, and we're ready for Canada versus Morocco. Into the stadium and up to the upper deck.
There were a few Canadians, but they were completely drowned out by the Moroccans. The logistics issues led to many seats being empty at kickoff, and whenever Canada got the ball, Morocco fans whistled them incessantly. It was their form of home field advantage. It didn't take long for Canada to be overwhelmed. Just four minutes in, Borean made a huge mistake going out of his penalty area, and Hakim Ziyech put the ball in the back of the net. Morocco backed another through Youssef and Nasri, and the celebrations were on. And hilariously, Borean nearly gifted Morocco a third in the dying embers of the match. What was he doing here? The final whistle sounded, and Morocco were through to the knockout round. Absolute scenes in the stadium, and the players thanked the fans for all of their contributions. Mama Stadium, Morocco 2, Canada 1, Morocco tops the group, and let me tell you, their fans brought the noise. The stadium announcer just wished everyone goodbye, but these Moroccan fans aren't leaving anytime soon. There are also thousands of Moroccans outside of the stadium. They couldn't get a ticket. They don't care. The after party was raging outside of the stadium, so I followed the party back to the heart of Doha, the Sukwa Kif. Needed a snack, so I got some chestnuts at the Sukwa Kif. And as I started my walk home under the moonlight, Morocco were on top of the world. Short days and long nights at the World Cup. To me, that means extra coffee at 8 p.m. or later. Always have to find a way to represent Villa. It was packed, but the best way to get to Stadium 974 is the Metro. Here we are at Stadium 974, the first temporary venue in World Cup history. It's constructed entirely out of shipping containers. This is the ground I was most excited about visiting at the World Cup because after the tournament, it will be torn down. This real estate is just too prime. It's gonna become luxury apartments here in Doha, Serbia and Switzerland up next. It looks completely like a normal stadium on the inside. Unless you pay attention to the fine details, you might not know that it's made entirely out of shipping containers. Look, even the seats are bolted on. After all of the matches, these seats will be removed. Pretty crazy. When I said constructed entirely out of shipping containers, I meant it. Check out the stairwells, the restrooms, and even the roof. I was one of the first people here, but I like getting to the ground early if possible. You get to watch warm-ups, and there were a lot of stairs to climb. Anthems were played and were just about ready to go. Well, almost. Switzerland was not in tune with the kickoff clock, but no matter, it was worth the wait. Mitrovic equalized just minutes after Shakiri's opener with a clinical header. Then, I found the worst celebration at the World Cup. I missed out on the third goal when I went down to get a water at halftime. The line was so long. But I did meet up with Mohammed from Bahrain who recognized me from my videos. What a special moment. All the way up. Shakiri got a standing ovation. Serbia pushed for the equalizer, but it wasn't meant to be. Switzerland 3, Serbia 2. That's how it finishes here at Stadium 974. Great game, fantastic atmosphere, and a five goal thriller. Can you believe the group stage is already over? The match was over, but my night wasn't. The metro was legendary and so were the lines. It took nearly an hour to get to the station. Luckily, I could pass the time by chatting with fans from around the world. A Serbia fan who supported Partizan Belgrade told me that when they lost to Red Star, he wouldn't go to school for a whole week. And as always, there was plenty of action inside the metro station. Finally almost made it home. 1.35 in the morning. I can't believe my last World Cup game is tomorrow. Kind of sad about it, but 
It's been an amazing time. Still have one left, USA versus Netherlands. Come on, USA, let's get to the quarters. This was my last day in Doha, so I had to get downtown and check out something other than the football. Here we are at the famous Corniche. Finally made it down here. It's my last day in Doha, so had to see the sights. This beautiful stretch of waterfront property has exploded in the last few years with skyscrapers. Doha is actually really peaceful during the day because like me, everyone's been up so late at night following the matches. If you can bear the heat, it's great to get out and experience the city. There was no shortage of sights to see. Loads of these giant player images were plastered on buildings around the city. Checking out the set of Fox. If you've been watching the tournament in the United States, you've been seeing this every day with the Corniche views in the background here in just north of downtown Doha. This was one of the fan villages with tents. I didn't make it over to check any out though. Popped into the post office. One thing that I absolutely had to do was send some postcards to friends and family. One of my friends collects stamps and I wanted to help build his collection. Off to the mall for some lunch. What was crazy was how on brand everything was in Doha for the tournament, even the official date shop of the World Cup. So ordered some lunch to go, but here I have acai soft serve with peanut butter topping and a peanut butter latte, which is peanut butter ice cream mixed in with a shot of espresso. As a peanut butter lover, this place is heaven. Last but not least, a vegan Rocher. They had a Rocher cake, but it was just going to be too much. First class seat on the metro back home to eat and prep for the match. Falafel for now. Save something for later because it's going to be a long day and a late night. Pack my bags and we're ready to go again. Off to the stadium. I've already been to Khalifa International and we'll be back again for the USA-Netherlands match. Love how these metro maps show you how to get to each stadium and what time the games are. It's so convenient. Spent a little too much time at the hotel editing, so I gotta hustle. Here we are at Khalifa International Stadium. The United States takes on Netherlands in their first World Cup knockout stage match in more than eight years. Yes, eight years. You can already hear the USA chants. I was hearing them on the metro. Pick off just around the corner. I'm still wondering what happened to his shoes. Found a Villa flag and a Villa fan. An early chance fell to Pulisic, but he couldn't finish it. And the Dutch made the USA pay on the counterattack. Little did we know that this would be Berhalter's final game in charge of the US. There was so much hope for Gio Reyna, and after the tournament we found out why he only featured very briefly as a substitute. A couple of waves around the crowd, but I wasn't too impressed by the effort. I went to time the stoppage time and missed the second Dutch goal. Going down 2-0 at halftime was a real buzzkill. At least I could watch some replays on the FIFA Plus app. USA fought hard and created some chances. The pressure was building, and then... Alas, it wasn't enough time to get back into the game, and the Dutch added a third. Full time here at Khalifa International Stadium, Netherlands 3, USA 1. Just like the USA, I'm going home. This was my final match of the 2022 World Cup. Well, the USA is out of the World Cup, but I don't want to hear people saying that it was a failure. Remember, just four years ago, this team didn't qualify. This is one of the youngest teams at the tournament. And hey, we're hosting the next World Cup. So this one ultimately was a warm-up run, getting our players some experience. Only one player in the squad had even played at a World Cup before. So it's all about expectations. And I think the US had a great World Cup. You know, Netherlands, this is a nation that football is in their blood. For us, it's still coming along. Kind of weird being in the stadium so long after the final whistle, it cleared out quickly. Wanted to hang around and see some of the USA players meet up with their friends and family afterward. Also wanted to chat with my friend Melissa Ortiz, who did an amazing job covering the tournament for Fox. Melissa got a big family hug. You could see he was playing through the pain and left it all on the pitch. I noticed so many of these homeless cats and they were so cute, but so scrawny. It's my last night here and I have a bit of cash left. So I popped into the hypermarket and got a few cans of food to give to these furry friends. Nice midnight snack, and it's time to get a little more work in.
I'm just leaving the city and I've only realized that the best time to be out and about in Doha is about 6 in the morning. The sun's already up, the weather is pleasant, and I never really got to experience it. Last time at this metro station, so bizarre with no people here. I can't imagine what Doha will look like after the World Cup. There were so many foreign football fans around. Back at the Doha airport, this place is absolutely wild. As PSG are owned by Qatar, it's only fitting to have a store at the airport. I got a smoothie and a coffee for the flight and a kombucha for later, but at Doha airport, you have to go through security twice. So I had to chug all of these liquids before boarding, then had to wait an hour for the bathroom. Had to celebrate with some champagne after an amazing and successful trip, and the food was world class. Airlines don't always have good vegan meals, but this was top notch. Got a little work done on the plane. It's a 15 hour flight, so I had to make the most of it. Finally made it back home to New York. Feels great to be back, even though it is a little cold out here. I gotta say, it was nice to be in the warm weather for a week. Bumped into some US players at the airport, pretty amazing. Told them how proud I was of them. Feels amazing. And it's really special to meet people who are growing the game so much in this country. Well, someone was excited to see me. Back home and it's already hitting me. Who else is having World Cup withdrawals? I haven't heard anyone sing Haya Haya or say Metro this way in more than five hours. Things will never be the same. The pain may be temporary, but I know the memories will be permanent. Gonna miss seeing World Cup flags literally everywhere. They say there's nothing like your first time, and my first World Cup will always hold a special place in my heart. I did manage to score that World Cup 2022 stamp on my passport and got a couple of souvenirs. Thanks so much for following along. If you've watched this far, you're a hero. Thank you for your support, and I hope you enjoyed this vlog as much as I did.